Hey there, my name is Emmanuel Abang and welcome to Product School. Today, I will be talking about cracking the FANG PM interview. Now, most of you know that FANG is an acronym for the big five tech companies, but um, this is not specific to those top companies, but general PM interview um, practice. Just a quick intro myself, I'm Emmanuel, uh, a PM lead currently at Meta, and I would be transitioning to a product leadership role at a new company. Um, I have been involved in products for over a decade now, and I'm very passionate about mentoring and helping people break into product management. And I guess this is why I'm taking this topic today. Now, before we go further, I would want to um, kind of let us know what this presentation is about and what is not. Um, first of all, this is basically geared towards giving junior PMs and for people who are planning to break into product management, a guide on how to prepare for PM interviews. Um, basically, this is not meant to be like a comprehensive and know-it-all approach to cracking PM interviews. Um, it's basically also to provide a framework for winning the hurdle of our PM interviews. It's also a guide on how to build the skills that will make you successful in your interviews. And like they say, practice makes delivery easy. Following the guidelines in this presentation will set you up for success. And I hope that was, you know, helpful just to set expectations as we go further. Um, I just want to give a personal prep journey of myself because as you begin to get ready for interviews or as you start interviewing you're going to get lots of like rejections you're going to get a lot of setbacks and i just want to encourage you not to give up because i feel like that's where many people find themselves as they apply for jobs at, at you know pm in, at, for, for product manager roles um they get rejected and they kind of just stop in between and they don't push further um, so my personal story is, you know, before joining Meta, I applied to over 100 plus companies, believe it or not. And I think number um, is very important by, you know, it's a numbers game. So the more companies you apply, you, you know, basically improve your chances. So this basic stats <laughs> um, and I got over 90 rejections, some at interview stages, email reject, and I literally didn't even hear back from some of them. And in my prep, there are certain books that really helped me in preparing. And I will share that probably in the link below or, you know, as we go further in the slide, um, especially for Louis Lean and Cracking the PM Interview by Gail McDowell. I also completed over 40 to 50 plus mocks. And I think mocks are so important because basically they help frame you know your your structured thinking um capacity but also it builds that confidence that you need going into a pm interview that is so so important as well then i had to watch over 100 hours of youtube videos from different um you know platforms like prior exponent product alliance product gym even product school as well and also having lots of brainstorm sessions. And I will go further to explain some of these things as we go further. Basically, for PM interviews, product management interviews, what do interviewers look like, look for, sorry, in a candidate? Um, me being an interviewee, an interviewer, um, I would say this is not, like I said, a comprehensive um, list, but I think these are basic you know, things and skills that every interviewer is looking for. One is your ability to communicate your idea in a clear and very structured manner. Sometimes as PMs or as individuals, when we get into this interview, we begin to panic. And, and sometimes we begin to dish out ideas that are very awesome, but in a very unstructured manner, we are kind of all over the place. And sometimes that could be like a red flag for an interviewer. So you want to make sure that the ideas that you're coming up with, you're able to communicate them in a clear and, const and a constructive manner, because these are part of the skills that will require you to be successful as a PM in your career. 
The other thing that they look out for is structured thinking, which is like what I highlighted in the first point as well. Being able to have a framework on how you tackle problems and solve issues. The set, the third thing would be user empathy. You know, for every product interview, there's always going to be that opportunity to show how you can empathize with users and user segments by understanding their pain points and listing it out very clearly and being able to also apply trade-offs and prioritize. So for example, you would have cases where you would have to mention like three to four pain points of a user probably using a product, for example, Uber, right? And then how do you come up with the trade-offs and how would you prioritize based on certain criteria like impact, like complexity to build, like confidence and things like that. Then they will also be looking for how you can think of great solutions to solve the user needs. I think that's something that's very important as well. Then of course, your collaboration skills. And this is mostly centered around, you know, behavioral um, types and scenario-based types of questions. Now, high level, there are four categories of interviews, you know, formats for PMs generally. And the first is product design and product strategy. And basically, just like the image is showing you, it's a combination of creativity and empathy. And as we go further down the slide, you would get a full picture of what this is all about. The second type is execution which is basically understanding how you would measure success of a product or a product launch, you know, how you would experiment and come up with, you know, very important trade-offs as you make product decisions. The third type of um, PM interviews are estimation questions. And I think this is particularly, you know, selling companies, you know, um, love this type of question. So for example, questions like, how many people played soccer yesterday? or how many restaurants are in San Francisco. Then the last type of question, which is, you know, generally in every interview is the behavioral question type, which basically is company value based. And usually companies will be looking to see those qualities and those values that they prioritize. For example, you know, Amazon has about maybe 15 to 20 um, values that they prioritize, some of which are customer obsessed, you know, um, getting things done, you know, being a team player. And I think in every of your answers, you have to kind of, you know, highlight some of these values as you present your answer through the STAR method. And of course, we all know what the STAR method is. The S stands for situation, T for tax, A for action, and R was the result. So um, next is, you know, we're going to be going into um, the product design and sense. Now, because of more, to be more effective and be more productive in this session, I won't be able to touch on all the types and formats of PM interviews, um, just because time wouldn't let us, and I feel I wouldn't be able to deliver the most value. So for the day, I will be focusing on product design and product sense. First of all, what is product sense? And I think there's no better way to describe it like the um, a former colleague of mine and someone who is a product genius and someone that I look up to as well, who is Julia Zhu, which is the former VP of product design at Facebook. And she said, first, what is product thinking? She said, my definition is simple. Do you have instincts about what makes a good product useful and well loved by people. More than that, could you design towards that outcome? I think this definition is really important, especially for those who are planning to break into PM roles for the first time. And you're wondering if PM or being a product manager is the right role for you. So I think simple, you need to ask yourself these two questions. Do I have the instincts about what makes the product useful and well loved by people? And can I de design towards that outcome? Now, in product sense interviews, there are basically five things I would um, 
I would suggest that you begin to develop as you prepare for interviews. One is user empathy. Now, user empathy is the ability to, you know, understand and be in the customer's shoe and feel the product from their perspective. For example, Uber, when Uber was, was you know, um, built, I think basically it was to solve the transportation problem and having empathy for drivers who could, taxi drivers who could drive from morning till evening and don't get a customer because probably they're not going through the routes where the users are. And for users, they don't know how to get an, a taxi, especially for people who live in maybe suburban areas. So that was, you know, identifying a pain point and having empathy for the users. Two is you have to build a sense of curiosity. You must be very curious as a product manager or as someone who is planning to come into product management to ask questions as to why, you know, certain things work the way they work, why other things are not as successful as they say they should be, and kind of understand fully, you know, those certain basic requirements that makes every product very successful. Number three is to be very observant. Um, as you go in your daily life, as you engage with different apps or websites and products, try to observe, you know, um, things like new product launches, new features, and why those features were being built and how they've made those products very successful as well. You would want to take a study of various products like Facebook, Apple, Google, as some of these top brands that have been very successful over the years and kind of understand what has made them very successful as well. Then the fourth skill is being very reflective and Five would be thinking outside the box. Sometimes as we, you know, come up with ideas and solutions, it seems like there is, you know, a cognitive fixedness that makes us only think within a certain scope. And in these interviews, you're required to think outside the box. Um, Google would call it moonshot ideas. So to so think of ideas that are, you know, not conventional and that actually solves user pain point. So I'm going to go into frameworks. Now, um, before we get into frameworks, I want to just say this as well. Frameworks are only a guide and a tool to help with structured thinking and not the solutions in themselves. Many a times people get so caught up with frameworks that, you know, once the interview you know, or the interviewer asks them a question that doesn't actually follow the pattern, you know, of a framework, they kind of get disorganized and, you know, um, begin to bamboo their words. So frameworks are basically only a guide and they help you to structure your thinking, but they're not a solution in themselves. And like someone said, they are like a map guiding you to the destination and not the destinations in themselves. So basically, um, Product sense questions basically um, are basically, you know, built to kind of help the interviewer understand your, your design skills, your user empathy, how you can empathize with users, identify their pain points, and come up with solutions that can solve for them as well. And, you know, a couple of examples could be how would you build a grocery experience for the elderly and your ability to empathize and come up with solutions that actually solve those pain points would be things that they'll be looking out for as well. We would go into product sense types of questions later on. Now, as a framework, when you're in front of the interviewer and you're asked a question like, how would you improve a certain product or build a certain product for a certain company? The first thing you wanna do is to ask clarifying questions. You don't wanna rush and just start solving the problem because by asking clarifying questions, it shows that you're a structured thinker. It also shows that you are also trying to consider different constraints and also resources as you go into building this product. So for example, one clarifying question could be, is this new feature going to be an app or would it be as a web version or a hardware or a software? Or you can also ask things like, in what location or geography do we want to launch this? Are there 
um, you know, resource constraint in terms of budget and things like that. And this goes to show your interviewer that you're actually thinking like a PM. Now, the next step in um, the product sense, I would, as an approach and a framework, is to always give your interviewer an overview of your approach. So instead of just going into solving the problem, you want to give like a preview of how you're going to approach the problem. So an example could be, now that I've gotten clarity on you know various aspects, after you've asked the clarifying questions, you could say, here is how I'm going to approach the question. First, I will think about the mission of the company and why this product will be important to them. Secondly, I want to think about the users and understand the various segments among the users and prioritize and pick one. Then of course, based on these users that I've picked, I would you know, highlight a few of their pain points and pick one explicit pain point that I think is the most important to solve for as an MVP. Then I would come up with two or three solutions to solve for this problem. And you know, if time allows us, I would be able to measure the success of this product. Now, what this does is that it gives the interviewer like a preview of how you want to approach the question. And what it does for you also is that it systematically allows you to you know, articulate your answers in a very structured manner. This also goes to show that you're a structured thinker and that you're organized in your thoughts. Then the third would be always connect the product idea to the company's mission and vision. And as a tip, while preparing for PM interviews, especially if you are told there's going to be a product sense, you know, is to always like um, study the vision and mission statements of various, you know, top companies in the world so that in case you're given an idea to solve for, you can always connect the idea to the mission. So for example, Facebook's mission is to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. So if you were given uh, a, hypothet a hypothetical question to say, you know, how would you build movies for Facebook, right? You find a way to connect the idea. Movies, you know, are part of our lives and, you know, people connect through movies. And I see why Facebook would want to invest in this product. That could be, you know, an answer in itself. Then go ahead to state the product's mission and objectives and clearly state your goals for the product upfront. And by goals, I mean, what would you be optimizing for? Would it be engagement? Do you want to drive adoption? That is get new users to get to adopt the product, activation or retention. And in some cases, monetization as well. Um, always good to state that upfront to show the interviewer that you have the right process in view. The next would be stating the competitive landscape of a product. That gives you an idea of how you can be more um, advantageous over the other markets. So if you're building a grocery app, for example, in an interview, you want it to be good to mention things like Instacart, Uber, Uber Eats, Uber Deliveries, so that the interviewer knows that you understand the competitive landscape and that whatever solution that you're coming up with would definitely you know, have an edge over the existing products in the market. Then for user segments, always mention the user segments. For example, if it's a three-sided marketplace or a two-sided marketplace like Uber, it will always be helpful to say, um, I'm aware that there are two sides here, the drivers and the riders, um, but I would like to, you know, for the sake of the interview and for the sake of time, I want to prioritize the riders and you should always give a reason why. The next would be to list three to four pain points associated with the segment. And down the line in this presentation, I would you know, help us identify how we can build empathy um, for customers and users. Then you would want to also brainstorm a couple of solutions that solve the most explicit pain points. And, you know, you clearly pick and prioritize one pain point to solve for, then clearly communicate the design and user journey of the solution that you are building to solve that pain point. Then if you have time during the interview, you'd want to measure success based on the goals that you set in the beginning of the, in the interview. So this is kind of a framework of answering products and questions. And like I said before, this is not um, 
know it all or full comprehensive approach, but I feel like every product sales interviews um, um, can be approached with this framework to be very successful. So what are the examples of product sense questions? Because sometimes you may be saying, well, okay, I'm ready. How do I know if a question is a product sense or something else, right? So these are a few examples. And usually product sense is usually either building a new product for a company or improving on an existing product or probably stating why you love your favorite product or why you dislike your worst product. And some examples could be, hey, build a dating feature for TikTok, build an event feature for Lyft. Facebook wants to go into movies, what would you build? Should Airbnb go into the furniture business? How and why? These are all product sense and sometimes strategy questions to understand how you think, how you, you know, consider the market, the users, their pain points, and of course, coming up with brilliant solutions to solve those problems. Now, I know some of you might be asking, well, this thing seems really difficult. How can I build a product sense skill? And people ask this a lot, you know, when I mentor and coach people. And I say, everyone, in my opinion, could be a product manager. Why? Because every product that is being built today is for the users. And if you're a user, definitely you can think like a PM. So first, I would say one of the ways you can build your products and skills is to pick a product, whether it's an app or a service, a website, it could also be a hardware, and ask yourself critical questions like, why do I love this product and why do I, or why do I hate it? For example, my favorite product is LinkedIn. And why do I love LinkedIn? For the next would be, what makes the product unique and why is, or, and why is it worse for you? Then you could compare it with similar products in the market and understand the different the difference between both product and you can do you can compare apples to apples. For example, you could say what is the difference between Gmail and Outlook, and you could kind of have both products in front of you and play around them and see you know why you prefer a certain product over the other. Then kind of write down also who are the different users and personas that would benefit from this product, then also think of how you can improve it. Now, write down your thoughts in a very articulate manner, share with senior folks and accept feedback. And trust me, maybe the first 10 or 15 times you do this, you would actually not do so good. Like in my, myself, I remember writing, um, you know, my first, I would call it, um, product development on a product and it was totally, I would say crap. And I accepted the feedback and that motivated me to do better. So I think this will be one way you can build your products and skills. But I think what is very important is ensure that you're sharing with senior PMs or senior folks and be very open and have a thick skin for the feedback that you get. Now, I get this a lot while I mentor people, you know, um, you know, trying to break into product management or people who are prepping for PM roles. And they say, well, how long should it take to prepare for a PM interview? I would say PM interviews are not a marathon, but uh, are a marathon, sorry, and not a sprint. So I think this is kind of a 30, 60, 90 day plan. And it is not, like I said, all comprehensive. And this is how it worked for me and I just want to share. So the first 30 days you should spend it, you know, identifying um, <clears throat> target companies that you want to, you know, um, apply to and work for, you know, then get a referral and build your network circle. Um, and if you're watching this video, this is a great step, you know, being part of the product school community as well. Then do the pick a product exercise at least 10 times. So we just talked about it in the previous slide where you pick a product, it could be Uber, it could be Lyft, it could be LinkedIn, WhatsApp, whatever product you decide and go through all of those um, questions. Then get feedback from your peers and senior folks to get a sense of where you are mentally, because that shows like how ready you are to go into the interview process. Now, based on the feedback, 
um, you get that would kind of inform how you move next steps. But usually I would say use the framework that was given earlier to practice on your own for at least one to two hours every day. So pick a product and use that framework, ask client find questions, give a high level preview of how you want to solve it and, you know, go from there as well. Watch live and recorded mock sessions, just like this one. Um, and there are various, you know, um, resources you can go to like try exponents product school um product gym uh, etc and i would say watch at least 50 videos in my in my case i said i watched at least 100 hours of live videos and mock interview sessions on various platforms then after you've done this within the first 30 days you've kind of built a sense around the you know the high level expectations for our product sense interview and kind of the frameworks and approaches and the different styles in which the questions may come. Then I would feel like the next 30 days after that would be to start trying out mocks. Now, the reason why I didn't start with mocks is that sometimes when you begin to practice, you know, and get ready for interviews, if you start with mocks and you don't do so well, sometimes it could be very discouraging and it might end up making you quit. So I feel like get a sense of it, build some certain skills before you start trying out mocks. Now do a lot of mocks, at least have 30 mocks in the bag. Very important. And what mocks does for you, it basically does three things. One, it helps you build the skills and the confidence required. It helps you, you know, have a framework for structured thinking. And basically it just helps you have a lot of ideas that you're getting ready to you know, exhibit during the interview. Now, apply to non-target companies, apply to as many companies as you can and get those practice in. I remember doing so many interviews before, um, you know, Facebook, you know, Cash App and other companies I, I, I was applying to at the time. And this would kind of get you in the, in the groove, like they say, practice makes perfect. Now, start attending interviews and learn from them. Find a brainstorm body to talk about product idea strategy. And this is different from mock interviews. So you, as you begin to practice, find, you know, very senior folks or people who have been in products and kind of, you know, brainstorm around different ideas, pick a product and just dissect it for hours if you have the time. Because what this does that it gives you an arsenal of product ideas to get into your interview as well. Now, as you prepare for the PM interviews, there are various resources that will be very helpful, especially for those who are planning to break into product role. One book I would recommend highly is Cracking the PM Interview by Gail McDowell. And I think you can get it on Amazon or various bookstores. Join a product management community. Um, and you know, the one I would really highlight is Product School. Um, very important. And of course, Try Exponent, which is basically a platform that helps specifically for preparing for interviews. And I think those two platforms really helped me as I got ready for cracking um, meta interview. Then um, there are other PM interview prep platforms that specifically are tailored towards helping you crack PM interviews. So one is tryexponent.com, the other is carriersconsultgroups.com, product alliance and product gene. And there are many out there, but these are the ones I would highly recommend. Now, there are stuff I didn't cover, touch in this interview. One is product execution, estimation questions, product analytics, and behavioral question. And like I said, because of time, we couldn't cover everything. But um, I believe in the next session that I hope to um, be speaking, at, I will cover at least two of these other types of questions um, and interview format for product managers. Now you feel free to reach me on LinkedIn. I believe the description would be, or the link would be in the description below. And also at um, Instagram, at my Instagram, at Carriers Consult Groups as well. Thank you everyone for listening. And once again, my name is Emmanuel and um, I'm really happy that I'm here. And thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.